Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on, let's go. So I'm going to ask the question today about uh, Prince Charles. Is he the one? Did he uh, ask the question about the baby's color? Let's dig into that. So was Prince Charles concerned with the uh, race of the baby, the color of the baby, the skin tone? What was Prince Charles's question? Did he uh, pose that to Harry? Um, there's so many questions we could ask about Charles, but let's just let's just focus on this because it seems to be the topic of the day. Is Prince Charles the racist element? So going to use the classic tarot for this uh, for this little talk today. And if we need clarifiers, I'm going to use these tiny little Rider Waite uh, tarot. So we'll put these to the side. You've seen these cards before, but maybe some of you are new and haven't. And uh, so we'll just go through it. Uh, as most of the tarot cards do, this comes with a great uh, booklet that uh, speaks to the uh, artist's intention for the um, for the meaning of the cards. So that's useful. The deck itself is a typical tarot deck in that it follows very closely the iconal icon. It follows very closly how the Rider weight um, um, illustrates the feelings of the cards. So, you know, I'm kind of a little low energy today, so uh, we'll just give this a minute and see if, um, if these cards can tell us a story about Charles. I think they can. I'll show you these cards again, as I usually do. It's nice to have an idea of what is in this deck, I think, and I find sometimes that the cards that, that somehow accidentally feature prominently in this little first display I give you of the cards somehow are often significant in the reading uh, later. So we'll see if that happens. But uh, now we'll shuffle them up and, um, and talk about that. So Prince Charles, I mean, he certainly if we can think back of, of how he was brought up, and you know, I'm an old fella, so I remember a lot of that. If you're a younger viewer, you might not. Um, but uh, his upbringing was certainly not ideal. You may remember that his father, Prince Philip, uh, forced him to go to a, uh, a school as a teenager that was really quite harsh and strict. And I guess it was with the idea of be like sending him to a military school, you know, the idea of, of putting some, some backbone, strengthening his backbone. And it wasn't a happy situation for him. Diane, uh, his uh, mother, the queen, I guess, wasn't completely uh, with the program, but she had left the education of the children decisions to her husband uh, and uh, Prince Philip. And so we'll see um, what does that mean. And we've got to remember, too, that uh, Charles was certainly raised in times that were very um, uh, outwardly racist and uh, at a time when people even harkened back to those times as um, sort of like good old days, just glossing over the atrocities that were done to uh, people of color. And has that uh, not uh, flushed itself out of his way of thinking? And uh, I'd be willing to bet that it hasn't. So we'll cut these cards, then we'll spread them out, we'll make this reading and see what the cards can tell us about Prince Charles. Prince Charles, what is going on for you, my friend? How are you feeling about this, this situation? One, two, three, four, five. I wonder why is it I can't count to six without confidence uh, when I'm pulling these cards out. I have to work on that. It's probably a little personal development I should do on that. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The signature card for Prince Charles in this regard is the Five of Cups. You know, the Five of Cups as a signifier card is starting out at, at kind of a low point, actually, in this, because this uh, person who has spilled these cups, or, who, or whom the cups have been spilled, um, 
and and or didn't, and keep him from benefiting from what was there. Um, it looks just even from the back, you can see that they're they're anxious about what's happened. There's a uh, a river of passion of emotion that's flowing right past him and right up to the castle, you know. And so this probably couldn't be more appropriate uh, for, of Prince Charles. He suffered a lot of loss in a different way of these two young these two princes. Still has two cups to go. And um, what is that about? You know, I wonder if this could be Diana and Camilla. It just came to my mind. So we'll, we'll leave that there. That's the signifier card for Prince Charles and in this regard as to whether he's the racist element uh, in the castle. The challenge to those that Five of Cups is the Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords is, you know, it talks to us about you know, kind of getting, getting away with something. Although this fella to me um, just seems to me like he's, is he going up or is he going down? If he's, if he's, if he's descending this cliff uh, from the, if, he, if he's going away from the tent. And uh, so the tent could actually be uh, the firm part of the royal family because he's not going towards, he's not going away from the monarchy. So he's holding on tight to, to, to this peg this lifeline as he tries to slip away with uh, five of the swords having left two behind. Those two behind, um, who are they? Who are they? In this instance, I want to say that they're uh, his two sons. Um, so the seven of swords is a challenge to uh, the five of cups. So uh, Prince Charles here uh, suffering a loss um, of, of, that's really distressed him. Uh, with the palace way off in the in the background, but looming over the picture, and with two cups remaining, and then the seven of swords is the challenge to that uh, situation. The base of this reading then is the four of cups, and the four of cups. You know, this is all a negative connotation so far. The four of cups speaks to you know being giving something that maybe you you're not ready for, or you're not ready to accept, or you don't want. And um, I don't know what that could be with, with Charles. I mean, it's such a, um, an, an uncomfortable situation where you're waiting uh, to move up the ladder in your position. But in order to do that, it comes at great personal loss, of course. The queen has to move out of the way before Charles can move into that position. And um, so it's something that's, that's, that's promising. Uh, it's coming to him uh, inevitably, I think in this card it's it's a big car, uh, cup that's being uh, offered to him and he just has averted his eyes really not wanting to acknowledge that uh, coming the recent past for that then is the wheel of fortune you know it's an interesting card to get the wheel of fortune when we're talking about charles and i'm drawn instantly to this uh winged lion down here towards the bottom of the of the wheel of fortune so it seems to me that his fortune started when he was born. The wheel has turned, turned, turned around, and we're getting uh, to a point to where he will inevitably um, take his fortune. He will take his birthright. And um, so I think that's the past, thinking about um, when, when this is going to inevitably happen, which is coming closer and closer now. Then the sky for this reading and the sky for this reading about Prince Charles is the High Priestess. And this is a, a knowing um, uh, High Priestess. This card gives us a, a, a nod towards our intuition to let us um, maybe indulge um, of what we're feeling about the situation. And uh, this High Priestess is uh, calmly uh, in charge of, of the knowledge that she has to share. For me, this High Priestess is uh, Queen Elizabeth. The near future for this first part of this, this Celtic cross is uh, the Two of Wands and uh, planning what's ahead. I don't know if you can see, but this one wand here is firmly fastened uh, to the uh, structure of what I would guess is the castle, just by the look of it. And then, um, <clears throat> but his hand is on the action that comes we actually see uh, another castle out. You know, this could be Clarence House, if you want to think of it that way. He's at Clarence House looking toward his future. It's it's not that far off, honestly. 
involves the entire Commonwealth. So I'm going to say this is Prince Charles um, pondering uh, his inevitable future. The self, the self of Prince Charles, who still hasn't given us anything clear about whether he is the one who has raised the question of the color of the child. So the self of this person right now is the emperor. And I would guess to the extent that he can be, he's pretty much in charge of what's happening uh, deeply behind the scenes, um, directing uh, a lot of the minutia that goes on uh, within the firm, I can imagine. And this is a defiant uh, emperor. He is steadfast. He's got his fist clamped around this, uh, this uh, scepter. And um, he has a loose grip on uh, this little globe here, which I can say is the Commonwealth. So if uh, Charles has a firm grip on the scepter of power and a loose grip on the Commonwealth, it looks like he's ready to move into that space as the self of Prince Charles right now. And then let's go to see what, uh, what in fact is the environment that Charles is in. Well, he's clearly in the environment of um, obstacles and um, disunion, um, uh, question, question about what can happen. Um, this is just a, a confusion of, of actions that don't seem to have a clear uh, outcome. So as the potential emperor, he's in the middle of all this uh, confusing uh, movement. The uh, hopes and the fears uh, of this then are the Knight of Cups. And this Knight of Cups for me is Harry. And I would say that Charles is probably indeed fearful of this big cup of emotion that Harry is calmly uh, trotting in with, uh, just into the picture with. The final outcome of this part of this reading is of feeling trapped. And uh, this person is not trapped, but they certainly feel that way. And I have to divert from my uh, Prince Charles theme and say, for me, this has to be, it, I mean, it certainly is a Charles. He certainly is trapped by the, by the truths, by the laws, by the rules of, of the firm and the monarchy and the British government. But for me, this certainly is a reminder of uh, the Duchess of Sussex. It's a rainy situation here. I hope that you can see that on camera. And uh, this person has kind of dug their toes into the mud and um, trying to make a movement uh, out of that. But you know, it doesn't seem clear to me whether we're talking about uh, whether, we, whether he is in fact the one who raised the question about the skin tone of the baby. So I'm just going to use these tiny little uh, Rider weight cards to answer that question. Let's only address that. Is Charles, in three cards or less, is Charles the one who has, um, who had, as a matter of fact, the reservation about uh, what this child would look like, this beautiful baby who now is a reality. So three cards, and uh, let's try to get the answer. There's really not a, a, a clarifier to, to do here. This is just, I really want the answer about, did Charles raise the question? And that's the fool. And the fool is a yes card. And uh, this fool, of course, is always starting off on a journey with the conscious uh, nipping at his heel. The second uh, clarifier for this question is going to be the tower. And in fact, uh, the tower is disaster. And if that was uh, the Prince, Prince Charles who had that uh, question, then it certainly is disastrous for him. And then the final card is having to make a choice uh, of which way to go. And once he realized that uh, Harry uh, was unstoppable in uh, his pursuit of Meghan Markle. If that was Prince Charles, who um, was uh, had all the questions and concerns about the color of the baby, then certainly it was a disastrous um, thing for him to say. And uh, the promise that I made to myself about these readings is that if I committed to filming uh, a tarot draw, then I, I'm going to commit to posting it online, uh, regardless of the outcome. So here it is. This is uh, what I have for this reading. Um, maybe you could make better sense of it than I could. Um, 
But the fact is, my name's Mark. This is my journey through tarot. I hope you enjoyed the journey. Come on back tomorrow. I'll be right here. But please, if you can, and why couldn't you, just subscribe. It's going to make a huge difference in how all of this goes forward, if all of this goes forward. And uh, help me out. Anyway, I'm Mark. My journey through tarot. Ciao for now.